Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? Hello, hello. Happy Monday. Hello, Pauline, Victor, and Henry. We are so happy to keep you company, Henry. Um, so sorry you can't sleep. I I totally get it. Um, it's uh, it's really rough to be up in the middle of the night, especially when you want to be sleeping. So hopefully this stream can just kind of like, you know, get you nice and relaxed, albeit I will be practicing. So there is going to be a little bit of high notes and stuff happening. But hello, Michael. Hello, Copano. Um, how are all of you guys doing? Yes, it is a Monday for the flute. Exactly. So um, I would like to very quickly finish up my tea. So um, I have my flute out already because I was just teaching a lesson before this. Um, these three days before I take off um, are very busy. Um, I have opened up one more spot for lessons um, on each of these days and um, tomorrow is not as bad. Today uh, is quite busy. So I had a lesson right before this and then this is right now. Then I have lunch and then three lessons in the afternoon. Um, so I'm unsure how uh, energetic I will be to f finish up editing tonight. Um, I wanted to get it done tonight, but it might make more sense for me to do it tomorrow because I have a lot more time tomorrow to like finish up editing, upload it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, but I do have the rough draft for the um, Yamaha 462H review video already done. So um, it's just kind of maybe putting in a few subtitles here and there, doing, um, doing the like opening bit of the um, like, a little opening, uh, um, not like an intro, but usually I like to kind of like put a funny little bit that happened later on in the video up at the front. And then I might do some sort of like um, exit card, outro card. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, it, it's always kind of up in the air how long that's going to take. Uh, Cause if I find a mistake, sometimes, sometimes I have to re-render the entire video. But anyway, I don't know if you guys are even interested in all of that stuff, but that's what's on my mind right now. It's a lot of like, I need to like teach all these lessons. I need to be present for all of these lessons and not let my mind wander. I need to get this video done and out, gone and <laughs> out of my head that is. Um, and then there was yesterday. Yesterday was amazing. I went to the Seattle Flute Festival after several years of not going. Um, most of the reason why I didn't go was first because of COVID. Um, and then after that, um, it was because of John's skin and just how tired we both were. Um, so this year I was much more comfortable leaving John at home. Um, and also I happened to be able to catch a ride with one of my students who's actually local to the area. So, um, like we met in the middle somewhere and then I was able to help her navigate. So it was nice cause then, you know, it was nice to be able to navigate together and have that company. So we did that and it was super, super fun. Um, it was kind of weird to be recognized. <laughs> like I, I walked in first thing, I, I don't think it was even 9 a.m. yet, and like already, you know, someone stopped me um, because they recognized me. Um, and I think the best part of meeting all these people was just they look, everyone who stopped me looked really happy, you know, like very um, safe. If if that makes sense. Like there was a joy in people's eyes when they stopped me and they, I've, cause I think in a way it's sort of fair to be scared <laughs> of, of like, you know, someone who's really good at the thing that you are doing. Cause I get that. Um, I get pretty scared actually of people who are really good at the flute, but I think when these people stop me and I can see the joy in their face, 
um, and like a really happy smile on their faces. Uh, that just made me feel like all of this is worth it. All of what I do is worth it. All of what I say is worth it. Um, everything is worth it. So it was, it was amazing. Yeah, four lessons in one day is a lot. Thank you guys for um, saying that because there's always a part of my brain that's like, I technically have another slot, <laughs> but I think I would not be present. Like by the fifth lesson, I don't think I'm present. Yeah, so you binge watch my videos. <laughs> Thank you, Einstein. And how are you, Einstein? You doing okay? Um, yeah. Mahjong Monday. That sounds fun, Michael. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I have very limited open spots right now. But if you guys are willing to fly by the seat of your pants and, like, just kind of, like, swap days and times for lessons, um, I, yeah, I could do it. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, thank you so much for saying that, Pauline, you're so sweet. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really awesome. Like, um, I met people throughout the day and then also, um, I did, I helped my student's friend, um, find a flute. I mean, I didn't do that much to help. It was more like, I just kind of like gave some tips on like, Hey, you might want to record yourself. So I helped record them. Um, so like on a few different flutes so that they have that hard data, you have to have some hard data of how you play if you want to make a very sound decision. Um, so that was super fun. I got to basically vicariously flute shop, <laughs> even though I'm technically done flute shopping. Um, I got to try a Trevor James alto flute again. And I slightly regret it because it was just as easy as I remember. <laughs> it's just as easy. And it wasn't even the full copper alloy. I, um, it did have the mother of pearl uh, keys, like the, the ergonomic key pad things. But like, um, I believe it was a silver. I think it was a silver um, alto and it was just as easy as I remember playing it. That was a mistake. I, I should not, should not have played that because um, now I want it, but I don't play alto enough. To... Um, what I really want is for Guo to come out with a, an alto flute, like a fully plastic does not deteriorate does not you know can withstand the elements alto flute i i would pounce on that in a heartbeat um but yeah yes trevor james flutes are amazing and in particular in my opinion trevor james alto flutes to me to my mouth are on another level now i understand Apparently, people either love the Trevor James um, alto flutes or they don't because it doesn't fit their mouth. Um, and there's really no in between <laughs> from what I have uh, heard. Uh, I'm of the camp where I believe it just so happens that my mouth tends to match the Trevor James alto flutes really well. So, yeah. So, Henry, you're headed back to the US next week. You got just got a new Miyazawa alto flute. You got it in Japan? Okay, since you're in Japan, were you able to, like, visit any of the, like, flute makers' headquarters? Um, oh, like, I have heard of people um, visiting those, you know, those headquarters. Um, and apparently it's amazing. And they're super sweet. And um, please don't do it unannounced, though. Please call ahead of time and see when, when they when it's a good time for them to uh, hang out with you guys um, <laughs> at their headquarters. Um, uh, yeah, please don't do these types of things unannounced. Um, but uh, it's 
I hear, I always hear it's amazing. Um, so I do think that the next time I visit Japan, because I have visited Japan once before uh, in 2018, um, I think that the next time I go, I would like to call up a few of these places and give them a visit. Yeah. So Henry, you did your master's here, got a job interview at the Miramatsu factory late last year. Oh, that's amazing. You didn't get the job, but we'll never forget the experience. That's exactly what I hear. I hear that it's always an amazing experience to go to their headquarters and to just like get the little tour and like, you know, just be a nerd with them, <laughs> you know, like it's just apparently it's amazing. So, um, Henry, um, I'm guessing you, um, you finished your master's and and if you have congratulations and to do it in japan is freaking amazing um wow wow thrilled for you absolutely thrilled for you so yeah um yesterday at the flute festival was was really amazing it was so chill it was chill to just hang out with a bunch of fluties the meet and greet itself was so cute um, had a handful of people show up, not a lot of people, but that's exactly what I needed. Um, and we hung out for the entire hour, just like, I think it was like five of us, something like that. Um, five, the five of us just hung out and just nerded about the flute, nerded about, um, Star Rail and Genshin because two of them play, uh, Genshin and Star Rail, so we got to nerd about that as well. Oh, it was so great. Um, one of them had a cane flute. It's a, it's a cane that's a flute. So, and it's playable. So, like, the top and the bottom are closed. So they're, but the inside is hollow. And on one side, there's a, there's a like end hole that's been carved into the tube so that it looks like a tone hole, but it's not, it's not actually a tone hole. It's just where the end opening is of the flute. And, but like, he, this gentleman didn't even like show it off or anything. It's more that he just happened to gesture with his hand like this when we were talking. And so my eyes tracked the movement of his hands. And he just, it just so happened that his hand tend to, like, it passed by one of the, like, tone holes of, of his cane flute. And so I, like, took a closer look at his cane, and the whole thing's a flute. And I was like, it, I'm sorry, but ex excuse me, I, like, is this a flute? <laughs> and, and it was, and he played it for us, and it, it was amazing. It, it's a conical uh, six-hole flute. Um, and it, it was, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's, I didn't know they made cane flutes. Did you guys know that they made cane flutes? Did, did you know this? Did you know that you can get a cane that's a flute? If, if, when I get old, old, and I need to use a cane, I am getting a cane flute. Like, that is what's going to happen. I did not know that you could have a cane flute. Like, what? <laughs> what is this? Let's see, Henry. So you got your Masters of Music and Composition here last month. Uh, still doesn't feel real, let me tell you. It still doesn't feel real to me either <laughs> that I have a Masters either. And that was more than 10 years ago. You never heard of it, right? So, Henry, you heard of, of the cane? Uh, romantic period recorder-ish instrument. Shotgun? Is that, is that, wait, I want to look that up. I'm still finishing up my tea, so. Mm. It doesn't quite look like a like what I'm seeing online here, but it, it was a very simple six hold conical flute um, and no keys whatsoever, um, but it was just shaped as a cane. I think it's essentially an Irish flute though. 
because this gentleman this gentleman was just like decked out in like irish um at least irish looking um attire um it was amazing um flute art does do earrings count as flute art because i definitely was wearing my flute earrings that was gifted to me by a student and then we got into a whole like music earring talking and stuff like that that was really really cute romantic period okay so probably a little different same see i, I think it's the same general idea it's like you can use it as a cane is as big as a cane but it's just the the middle part of it is hollowed out so that it's a playable flute is that wild super wild like i um i made sure to point it out to um to anyone who is passing by in the area i was like you have to see this we're at a flute festival did you know that you can get a cane that's a flute <laughs> I am getting one when I need a cane, when I'm when I'm old and decrepit. Okay, if if I need a cane to walk around, I'm getting a cane that's a flute. Incredible, absolutely incredible. <laughs> mm. Okay, I finished my tea. Um, I have my water bottle here, which I was very happy to find out fits in my purse. Um, without looking like it's gigantic. I don't know how this works, but it does. Um, so I will be taking this around with me on my vacation. Um, I am very, very excited for that. But for now, I will uh, rinse out my mouth a little. Okay, we've rinsed out the mouth. So it is time to practice. We will get our hour going. Here we go. Um, I'm just going to move on over to here. Um, right now, there are no plans to come out to Toronto. Um, and Michael, I will ask that you please uh, stop asking um, because this is um, uh, several times now that, um, that this has been asked. And um, each time I have to give the same answer. So um, if we keep repeating our question like this, it's going to feel like pressuring. So I would kindly ask that you please stop. Um, if there are, um, you know, any plans to come to Toronto for like flute stuff um, and to do a meet and greet and stuff, don't worry. I will definitely let you all know. I'll definitely, definitely let you all know. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, okay, sounds good. Um, let us do harmonics, shall we? We will grab my earplugs, which by the way, I forgot to bring my earplugs to the flute festival yesterday and I had slight regrets. So, um, if you guys want to kind of like walk through the exhibit hall of any flute festival, flute convention, without feeling like your ears are going to bleed from the amount of flute playing and piccolo playing that's happening. Um, highly recommend that you guys get some high fidelity musicians earplugs. It'll really help. Thank you, Michael, for understanding. I appreciate it. Okay, so let's get our timer going and then we will begin. Okay, wonderful. Let's do this. Okay. After trying a few flutes yesterday, I'm very pleased to say that I have maintained my own embouchure. 
so yay. Um, you know, Henry, I totally thought of bringing my earplugs, like, I think it was like the night before as I was packing, but I f ended up forgetting. But I remembered to uh, place my silicone ring near where all of my stuff was to get ready so that when I left the house, I swapped out my wedding ring for my silicone ring. Cause that's another thing. If you want to keep your ring on when you are like trying a bunch of flutes through like an exhibit hall or something, um, if you want to keep your, your, like, if you, if you still want to look married, okay, then, um, get yourself a pack of cheap silicone rings off of Amazon. Um, if you, uh, if you don't remember though, um, you're gonna have to keep like take off your rings when you're trying flutes because you can really like you can scratch all these new instruments just by like holding it with your with your hand now if you don't wear rings at all you don't have, you know worry about this at all okay but like that i remember the silicone ring i did not remember the earplugs too bad no metal rings or dangly jewelry at flute conventions there you go <laughs> you know it you know the drill. I did wear flute earrings though, but they were only this long. So there's no way it's going to hit the flute at all. So just make sure it's not like a huge earring that can potentially hit the flute. That's the only thing. But I was wearing these like really nerdy, really cute um, flute earrings gifted to me by a student. And it was, I love it. I, I brought it to Italy when I was teaching in Italy people loved it. I tend to try to wear the flute earrings to places where like there are musicians <laughs> and they would notice. <laughs> God, that makes me sound vain. But you know, it's nice to hear the appreciation, right? So student knows who they are, who gave it to me. So thank you. Uh, we are doing number 31 on page 21 of Moise de la Sonorte. So these are interval, extra, interval tone exercises. And we are doing the third articulation, which is, I believe, slurring from the changing notes down to the bass note, which is D. Okay, so we are doing slur, slurring in groups of two. Here we go. I just realized I need to turn off my fan and my heater. Give me a second. It was a little cold for my liking this morning when I started teaching, but I thought I would remember to turn that off before I streamed, but I didn't. Um, don't use the polishing cloth. They're swabbing, guys, because they're not yours yet. Did you see that they came out with new stickers? So they actually put the polishing cloth and the gauze in two separate, like, uh, plastic bags now. And they have now put a sticker on it. They got a sticker made from the flute center that says, 
please do not use this until you own this flute. It's so good! <clears throat> oh, di I didn't even realize I was using the alternate third register G sharp fingering. I always use it if, if I'm going to hit it and I don't have to like wiggle around to other notes really quickly because it's just a lot more in tune. <laughs> it is a lot more in tune. It's a lot more reliable as well. At least I find that on my flute, it's more reliable. Like it, it, like I resonate it right where I think it needs to and it, and it just pops. Whereas I feel that when I go for the, um, the regular fingering, it sometimes it's not always consistent for some weird reason, or at least I'm not hitting this, the resonant spot consistently. So anyway, yeah, thin and easy to crack. Exactly. That's how I feel. Like it doesn't have that. It, it, it's not as full, I feel. So yeah, thin and I, th I feel like it's a little sharper too, in my opinion, but anyway. Now we are going to do it as written, which is the fourth, the fourth articulation. <sighs> okay. I definitely have like a little bit of like, um, sniffles. I think it's because of like the pretty sharp temperature drop from today. Um, or that is from yesterday to today, yesterday was a pretty warm day and then today is pretty cold so like i noticed that i tend to get a little bit more like uh post nasal drip and then also just some general congestion um when the temperature drops like that so i think that's where that's from anyway let's do this as written <laughs> There are definitely some spots that I think I, I'm tightening as I'm retracting instead of relaxing and loosening up. So I want to do some of the middle portion because the middle portion was really where it started to happen. I would say in the bottom half of the high register is where it really started to happen. So I'm going to go a little bit before that and then up a little bit higher just to keep this area nice and loose. Hey Saturday, how are you? Okay, I think that's as good as it's gonna get today. We will leave it. Um, for tomorrow, we will do number 32, which is on the next page. We're gonna be on page 22. Holy cow, we're actually making our way through this. Amazing. Um, we're now just going to do a tiny bit of circular breathing. Nothing crazy. I'm just trying to do a little bit of it per practice session, you know, We'll see how it goes.
Um, thank you for that, Henry. Um, I think after trying all the uh, different head joints that I've tried yesterday, um, uh, I think I still like the monk, my, my manka the most. <laughs> So what I found particularly interesting was um, there's one manga head joint that was at the Flute Center booth yesterday that looked a lot like mine. But when I looked more closely, the wood is not Mopani. It was Cocos, um, which um, unfortunately, because I was, I, it's not actually unfortunately, I, I think my, my priority was chatting with people. But because I was mostly chatting with people, I didn't get to try it. But I'll have more opportunities in the future to try it. So like, I don't feel like it's a super missed opportunity, but um, they had a Cocos wood one. Um, and so I'm very curious to know how that would have, like how just, you know, um, switching out the lip plate wood, but with more or less the same setup. I was very curious to know like what it would do to the, like the inside of your mouth and where, where things resonate, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that's how you know it's the right. I know. I think there's something amazing about coming back to your head joint and being like, this is still the one, you know? You used to go to conventions always think, oh, this one is better at X, Y, Z. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Victor. I will definitely take you up on that. Cheers. Do you guys like that my bottle matches my shirt? If it's not already apparent, I really like dusty green, <laughs> like a faded dusty green. I find very calming to look at. And today, because it's Monday and it is the start of a really crazy week, um, I was like, I need, I need to be able to look down and be like, ah, oh. ah, oh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So you have, so Henry, you have a Nagahara Galway cut with platinum riser. Oh, sounds fancy. I love it. Oh, you must sound amazing on that. I know exactly, right? My husband brought this home from a raffle draw at work. He won a raffle draw and got this. And he knew that I've been wanting a huge water bottle to keep myself hydrated because I hate going back to the kitchen and constantly refilling. This I only have to refill once in the day. Um, and I'm very hydrated now. I'm very thrilled to say I'm very hydrated these days. <laughs> so. Hey, Noelle, how are you? All good. Don't worry about being late. You're signing up for your first official food lesson. Yeah. Are you excited? Have you met your teacher? Give us all the deets without you know, divulging too much or anything that you're uncomfortable with. We would love to celebrate with you. Uh, okay, we're doing number four, which is really, really long in 480 exercises. Actually, I only did it, the circular breathing on my hand, right? I should probably do it on the flute. Okay, we'll do a little bit of circular breathing on the flute. So we're trying to not inhale too much because I think I was inhaling too much before. That's what we're focusing on. Ironically, I did it better on the straight tone than on the trill. So that's interesting. But I got three okay ones in a row on the flat single tone. So we're going to take it and move on to the 480 exercises. So this one um, <clears throat> is um, we're in E flat major. 
Okay, and we're doing these little wiggly exercises and it's very long, so here we go. By the way, I am only doing the long B flat as an extra challenge. Uh, it was suggested to me by the maker of this lovely swab, um, Cam Voyage. Uh, so Nicholas Flute, uh, as he's known on Twitch, um, here on YouTube, his username is just another flute guy and he's actually one of my moderators. Um, long time subscriber who has helped me a lot with my playing. Um, he mentioned that his professor said that a great fun challenge to just kind of make your techniques, your technique exercises more challenging for you is to always use long B flat. So I've started doing that and it really just kind of poses a fun new kind of like aspect to like time the fingers even more accurately. Um, cause truth be told, I was getting kind of bored, um, doing it with just the B flat thumb because it makes things so much easier. It just gets kind of boring. So. Anyway, if you notice the long B flat fingering, that is why. Um, we will continue. Yeah, okay. 
always sounds wrong because I feel like in my head, I start to think of this in A flat major part, the, part of the way through. And then when I get to the D natural, I'm like, Arr. Right? Like, like the D natural just sounds wrong when you get to it, because I think especially you're right, especially if you are starting from A flat, like my brain immediately like assumes that that fourth note is going to be a D flat, like it's going to be the fourth note of an A flat major scale. Uh, it's like auto correcting, but like for music. Yeah. Got a little distracted because I was like, oh, right, I have to like open up, lift the top of my mouth and really open up there instead of like um, crunching down to get those high notes out. I need to like think of opening up up top because that will lift the that'll lift the roof of my mouth and it will encourage me to actually resonate the note higher up in my mouth. OK, we keep going. This challenge here is to keep it really open and up the entire way and not come back down earlier than I need to. So we're going to do two more for fun, simply be because we can go up to the high D. So this is also part of my like extra challenge to myself. I think it has to be higher. Deanna, how are you? We're count we're counting that as good. We probably need to um, swab out. Um, okay, one more thing I want I remembered about I know it takes so much air up there. It takes so much air. It takes less air now that I understand lower lip manipulation. So I'm not even blowing as hard as I was before, but you still have to blow pretty hard up there. Um, uh, if you stick your lower lip out, it will um, place 
the aperture between your lips closer to the opposite edge of the lip hole because you know as you know getting a sound out on the flute it means um, you have to cut your airstream in half with the opposite edge of the lip hole. Um, when you're blowing a stream of air, the air pressure is highest closer to your lips than further away. So if you jut your lip forward so that you are closer to the opposite edge of the lip hole, you don't have to actually blow as hard because the opposite edge of the lip hole will catch a higher air pressure, like a naturally higher air pressure coming out of your mouth. Um, now that's just the outside part of the embouchure. On the inside part of the, like what I'm calling the inside embouchure is where you're resonating inside of your mouth because you can do all that stuff on the outside, but if you're not resonating it in the correct spot inside of your mouth, it still won't really want to come out. So for me, that high C is like, I want to say up here uh, in the middle, kind of against the roof of my mouth. So, um, that that's how uh that's what i've been experimenting with over the last month or so i would say and definitely i don't have to blow as hard these days so it's it's an interesting um uh, uh concept so you know especially because you have your masters and you have like a very very high-end flute i think it might be interesting for you to see um this this article um it is just online um like about this concept um so let me share that with you really quickly um just because i think i think you guys would be very interested to know so um let me share this with you guys because i can put links in the chat <laughs> so give me a sec to find it um yeah there it is so there so um yeah i just put a link in there a very very nerdy link um the language that is used in it is very academic and very dry just just so you guys know okay but um it it very clearly i think um talks about some of the concepts that i just talked about now so i think it would be very interesting for you to kind of read about it and, and um and think about i i wish this was required reading when I was in university, because this would have saved me so much headache with those high notes. Um, but I would say that what I, this article more or less covers more the outside embouchure. The inside embouchure part, I still think is very, it's determined by the flute itself, because different flutes want you to resonate in different spots in the mouth, at least in my experience. So, um, thank you for coming to my TED talk. We will move on. <laughs> Okay, so the next exercise we will be doing in 480 exercises will be 137. Um, there we go. Um, almost continued on to a DMA in composition, but decided not to do it right away. Probably <laughs> academic and dry, my favorite. Um, yes, so um, I... I think you're making the right choice. In my opinion, I do feel that if you can afford it. Now, I understand that there are situations where you cannot afford to skip a year between a year or two or take some time in between degrees. Um, but if you are afforded that luxury of, um, you know, like a, a bit of time between your degrees, um, I do find that it kind of helps you see things from um, a more practical perspective. Um, before going back into the academic world. At least that's what happened um, in my, I took a year and a half off uh, between my bachelor's and my master's. Not really by choice. It was because I failed my first master's audition uh, and then I didn't have a plan B. So I had to take a year off, but I am very glad that I did it because um, I feel that it really helped um, put me in a much more kind of like practical um, mindset when I got into my master's and I think it helped me learn more during my master's and have a better time. So, yeah. Um, it's important to not just stay a student because student be, being a student is easy. That's one way of putting it. I certainly see that perspective. I, I can certainly see that perspective. Um, I think being thrust into the real world and to do, you know, adult 
have adult responsibilities, um, it really changes that viewer's perspective. Um, have a wonderful, um, wonderful rest of your day, Michael. Thank you so much for your kind words as well, and also being super understanding and, um, you know, like, and listening to my requests. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your day, Michael. Um, okay, so we're going to drill uh, Q56 first with compression exercises. So like long, short, long, short, long, short, short, long, short, long, short, long. We're going to do that first and then we will read it once or twice um, as written. Okay, this is just to kind of help because um, uh, I am relearning how to play fast without flailing and stretching my left hand fingers because that is holdover from before um, when I couldn't reach the keys. Um, because I had the keys t pulled too far back. So um, now I have to kind of like re-practice everything, um, practicing not stretching like this. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Let's do Q56 in the movement three of the E-Bear. smooth. We're getting there. Um, I think it is helping that I'm thinking of blossoming up there so that it encourages me to resonate higher and to lift the roof of my mouth. Um, so that's making that more smooth. And because I trust that now, I think I'm not like, you know, stretching. Um, okay. So we will do uh, down the recap. Here we go. Um, before I forget, because I forgot again, one of um, my visitors to the meet and greet showed me that they bought this. <laughs> did I say that already? I feel like I didn't. I feel like I was about to, and then I got off track. So they showed me, they took it out, they took out their matching one and was like, I love it. <laughs> I thought that was so great. Anyway, we keep going.
we are not going to fix what's not broken. That was the smoothest I have ever done it. <laughs> we keep going. We don't know you're at work. We have no idea you're at work, Deanna. We just, we don't, we don't know this. <laughs> you're doing well, good, I'm glad. Working on illustrations on morning, your poor fingers. Oh yes, give them a rest. So let's see, Henry, you found out last year that there's a flute orchestra version of this concerto, just like an army of flutists playing this hugely energetic, exciting work. Too bad you couldn't find a recording. Oh. Cheers, Victor. Mm. Jorge, I'm so sorry, I forgot to say hello. Um, how are you? How are you, Jorge? Any tips on uh, uh, to not press too hard on the keys when playing the flute? You may want to look into the how you're balancing the flute because likely you are gripping the flute because you feel like otherwise the flute's gonna fall out of your hands. So um, you wanna make sure that you are holding up most of the weight of the flute with this hand right here along the side of your index finger, like towards the bottom of it. Um, or some people find it's a little higher, it depends on the person. Um, and then uh, uh, on your thumb here. And then your chin is not really holding the flute, it's more just like holding it still, if that makes sense. Uh, but most of the weight is between these two points. Um, so if you don't have that, uh, likely you're going to feel like you have to like grip the flute. So you may have to look into a little bit of like posture things for you, you know, stuff like that. It gets very complicated very quickly, but j the, the root of the issue tends to be in my experience as a teacher, gripping tends to be, uh, the, uh, to be, uh, like sort of a manifestation of feeling like your the flute is imbalanced in your hands for some reason or another. Okay. We continue.
did I do that? I somehow managed to flip, like rotate the pages. Good job, me. Okay, moving on to the next section. I got confused with the previous version of this because it's slightly different and I was like huh? um but other than that it was pretty smooth but I will do that one more time Okay, I'm gonna take that. I took a little sneak breath because I was like a little insecure, but I'm gonna take it. it it's okay. We'll keep going, last section.
Let's go. I can feel I am dripping condensation, so let's swab. Um, I think I still need to pinpoint exactly where that F7 resonates. Um, I think I still don't have it pinpointed. Okay, we're gonna do this again. Okay, it's a little closer, but I could hear that the air came out first and then the note. So I, I think it's too far back. Yes, it is an F7. Um, it's the only F7 fingering that I can um, reliably play. Um, and it was taught to me by the guy who made the swab, Nicholas. Yeah, so... Um, Um, but it's uh, left one, two, and then right half two, second trill. It's actually a lot more forward and higher than I think it should be. Interesting. Um, okay, we're going to go back and then play this as written. That is actually more reliable. It's like up here. 
Um, yes. Oh, let me look in the flute dojo section. Oh, let me see. <gasps> you what we a great guy website i love this guy this guy is great oh hi b without oh right yes So, okay. That way I only have to change two fingerings. Okay. It certainly makes the F7 louder for some reason. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. So you actually kind of intentionally want it to be a little out of tune, right? So that it will be for like a little bit further away from the F7. Is that right? F7 come out a lot louder. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds more like a fourth to me, too. It's a good one. I'm going to write this down. I'm going to write this down. Um, so that is... Um, I'll, I'll start drilling that, too. That, that sounded a lot better than... Because I haven't been happy with that interval. So thank you for this. See, I don't know what I would do without you guys like straight up um so this c here we want to be basically it's a b without the thumb right so i'll put here high b without thumb yeah okay yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do that from now on that's just so much more reliable. <sighs> My thing is freezing. There it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that definitely. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That one I will attribute to you, Henry. <laughs> Chill fingering for C isn't as full of tone, but you want to, if you want to accent the F, it helps. Yes. Um, which is exactly because if anything, it's more of a pickup into the high F. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, like you guys can hear how much louder it makes a F7, right? So like, yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, that was really great. Okay. Um, we have three minutes left, so I'm going to just have a little fun with the Genshin Rabbitus Wildfires. Um, I did not play this one at the flute festival yesterday, but I played a whole bunch of other themes. I only played Genshin things <laughs> on flutes. Because they're really good, actually, to use the test flute. Um, but okay, I think I wanted, there was a part that I was like reviewing in my head yesterday and I couldn't quite get it straight exactly how it went. So I'm going to give that a go.
you, Greg. How are you? Welcome. Um, the Mid-Atlantic Flute Fair actually had a video game concert. Really? Awesome. Uh, Carolus, hello. Um, you should have come up to say hi, please, next time. Um, next time I'm there, I, I do hope to go back, um, do basically the same thing next year. Um, please come and say hi. Please, please come and say hi. Do not be shy. Guys, if you see me at, especially if you see me at a flute event, even if I'm just walking by, please stop me. Please stop me. Please just say, hey, I watch your stuff. Hi. <laughs> um, I, I would be more than willing to pause and, and chat with you a bit. Even if I have to go to the bathroom a bit, I will chat with you for like, you know, at least a few seconds here, here and there, okay? And then if I have to go to the bathroom or something, I'll let you know, okay? You know, we, we cool like that. <laughs> you were super shocked? that the mid-atlantic flute fair had the video game oh so good oh, this makes me so happy <laughs> okay um that's what i wanted to review because i was like singing this in my head yesterday and then i was like there's one part that i am just not remembering so now i filled that in i did exactly what i wanted to do so i am going to uh clean up for today there we go. Let's clean up. Um, I can already hear Hubs is in the kitchen. Um, probably getting some lunch going, so I want to participate. So I will clean up really quickly to join him. Um, you're a fangirl. You've been watching me since the beginning. You need to come up and say hi and tell me that you're um, Carolus. Or at least I hope I'm saying that you're I'm saying your username correctly. Please, please. Please come up to me next time. Tell me that you're Carol Yes, please. Yes, I, um, I will. I will do my best to be there next year. the 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 only reasons why I won't be there next year is if I'm sick, um, or if I happen to have to travel somewhere around that time. Um, one of the reasons why I'm heading out to vacation um on thursday of this week i'm not joking was so that i could go to the flute festival <laughs> i was like because we were thinking of going like starting last week and then i was like no like i i need to make sure that i can make it to the flute festival and john agreed so yes Exactly. Good work, everybody. And thank you so much, Henry, for suggesting that um, the, that particular fingering for the high C um, at the end of the eBear. Uh, for anyone who missed it, um, it, you can finger a high C as a high B, but without the thumb. Um, and it is not uh, like it's, it's flatter. It's quite a bit flatter, but because of that, um, it actually sounds like more of, a, of, a, of an actual perfect fourth between the C seven and the f7 um so i really like how that sounds the plus side to it as well is that for some reason it makes the f7 way way louder which is exactly what you want at the end of this so it's much more reliable so all i need to do is get used to the fingering and i am gucci so thank you so much henry for that yeah i'm really glad it works on my flute too i from my understanding that high c and its alternate fingerings can be like have wildly, wildly different um, like experiences on different flutes. So, yeah, exactly. That explosive, you want that explosive finish. Like, I think it's more that it's not that I just want the explosive finish to the e bear. I need to be able to guarantee it. It needs to happen 100% of the time. And before, when I was using the original fingering for the high C, it was not guaranteeing an explosive finish every time. But you guys noticed, right, when I was using that high high B with with no thumb fingering, um, it it seems to guarantee that the F7 is explosive. So that's what we want. 
So that alternate fingering for high C is the only useful fingering for high written C on the alto flute. Really? I didn't know that. Wow, I'm learning so many things today. That feel when the composer writes three octave for alto flute. I feel you guys. I feel you guys. There's a lot of why, but at the same time, it's like, okay, I get it. The alto flute has a very different timbre from the C flute. The C flute is a lot more like, you can tell that the, um, whatchamacallit, like the, sorry, I forgot to put this guy's on, put the, this camera on for you guys, but um, there's definitely like the C flute has more of like a, um, cinched in sound like the sound is very um there it's not very hollow like like the c flute tends to be very cinched in and like a very tightly packaged sound whereas the alto flute tends to have this lovely like open hollow sound like that is very natural to its timbre um so like i get it like i i i get that there's timbre differences and that's what the composers are likely looking at is the like the the timbre and you know but they they still want you to go like that high but you know with that same timbre like i get it but it's like yeah if you're using a curved head joint it's even more sharp really i didn't know that do you know why is it just because of the physics of it like the physics of the curved head joint that's so interesting. I would love to know why. You wrote a piece for prepared alto. Well, what did you have to do to the alto flute? You, so, so Greg, you just recorded a theme for a game that was all up in the third octave of the alto flute, but the composer knew exactly what he was doing. But man, it was hard recording that in the session. Yeah, cause he probably wanted that timbre, right? Because it's a timbre that you cannot get on the C flute. You just cannot get it. You, you cannot. Like, no matter how hollow and wide and big you try to um, make your sound on the C flute, it will never rival how naturally open and, like, hollow um, an alto flute sounds. So the curve isn't a perfect parabola. Oh, math. Okay, I get it. I understand. Um, curve head joint just uses uh, concentric cylinders, um, so the third octave gets progressively more sharp. Oh, well, that is very good to know. Thank you. Mm. Um, oh, interesting, Greg. So the composer wanted the timbre of the flute struggling from a timbre sense. What game is this? I love that. Um, so your prepared alto flute uses both a curved and a straight head joint with the cork position modified to make the straight sharper and the curved super flat. Oh, that is so cool. Why is that so cool? Oh, is it an NDA right now? Don't worry, don't break your NDA. Um, um, when it comes out though, I would love to hear about it. Please let us know when it comes out. Would love to hear, especially with your description of, of the, what the Alta Fleet is doing. So the Doppler effect with a reference to Doppler Hungarian pastoral times. <laughs> that is really cute. That is really cute, Henry. Oh my gosh. Okay. I am all done packing up. So uh, thank you all so much for joining me today and just for being huge nerds with me. Like I cannot even fathom like how I can actually fathom how boring my life would be without being able to stream like this. And also like I'm just continuously learning so much and like just thank you all for your generosity in sharing all of this information with me. Um, there are just some things that you just don't think of and that you just don't, um, will never come across on your own. So thank you. You guys don't ever have to tell me these things. And, and I just want you to know that I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, 
and um like i to the best of my ability i try to always give you guys credit for anything that i am doing um so thank you thank you thank you thank you um and uh yeah i'm i'm just I just keep getting more and more excited to come back to practice, which I never thought I would be the type of person to say that. So um, thank you all so much for being generous uh, to me and to each other and kind and wonderful and uplifting and understanding of each other, um, you know, in all our uniqueness and our different experiences. Um, seriously, I think that that is awesome. Like, it is really awesome that you guys have, like, kind of the same outlook as I do on all of this. We're, we're just here to be nerds. That's all. Okay. So I love you all so very much. I will be back tomorrow. I will be back tomorrow. So I'll be back tomorrow and the day after because in the middle of my crazy work days, I need some time to myself. So this has been really like just like this has filled my cup and I am ready to take on the rest of the day. So thank you so much for joining me. Take care of yourselves to the best of your ability. Stay happy, healthy, and safe. And I shall see you guys tomorrow. There is no music without the musician. All right? Laters, guys. Bye.